Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Deb's Way and I'm Deb. And this afternoon I'm going to answer um, a tag that I got from Nona Grace. And the name of the tag involves uh, about 14 questions and it's called Get to Know Me Tag. So let me begin. Oh, by the way, thank you Nona Grace. <laughs> I don't mind doing this. Some of the questions were harder to answer than, the, you know, some, but um, it was kind of fun to do. So let me begin. Number one, what is your name and who named you? My name is Deborah Ann, and that's Deborah, spelled D-E-B-O-R-A-H. Uh, my mother named me. I would say uh, she, I think she had a great deal to do with naming all of us kids. We all had biblical names. I don't know why, really, or she chose biblical names because... Um, we weren't that religious based, so I, but we all had biblical names. Uh, how many siblings do you have? I had two brothers. My older brother, he was four years older than me. He passed away well over 25 years ago, um, very suddenly. So, um, yeah, and I have a younger brother who's a year younger than me. Number three, were you close with your cousins growing up? Uh, I grew up during a time when, okay, going back, my, bro, my dad came from a family of like 10 kids, okay? And back at the time that us kids were growing up, it was also a time when people were migrating in droves, especially to California. I, I do remember California was a hot spot back then when I was growing up. And a lot of his brothers did migrate um, all together, actually, in a clump to um, around L.A. area. Those particular cousins from that, that type of, that side of the family, I really didn't get to see very often. They would come and visit sometimes in the summer, and we'd spend weeks together. That was a lot of fun. Other than that, I, I really only knew the cousins that lived right in our town, in our area, and that was one of my mother's sisters, her family, and then my dad's sister, her family. So, but we'd get together on holidays and weekends, especially on, with my dad's side of the family. And there, we had a lot of family time together back then. We really did. We made time to have family time. Like, I think that's really important. Uh, anyway, um, number four. Do you have or did you have a special bond with your grandparents? Well, on my dad's side of the family, a special bond, I don't know if it was a special bond, but we saw them quite often. Now my dad's father passed away when I was probably about six or seven, and his mother we saw quite often, we, like almost every weekend or a couple of times a month for sure. And yes, we spent holidays with her, weekends we visited, uh, we saw her a lot. My mom's side of the family, when she married my dad many, many years ago, <laughs> she married a non-Catholic. And being a devout, a devoutly raised Catholic, her family more or less shunned her. I really did not know my mother's side of the family at all, except for an older sister that she had, and we saw them, her and her family, quite often as I was growing up. And I don't know why. Um, I, the only thing I can think of is that we didn't see much of my mother's um, siblings because they all lived out of state from that point. I mean, we, they lived distant. So, number five, did you enjoy high school? No, negatory. Many years later, I guess I figured out the reason why I really did not enjoy high school was because, not because of the, the, you know, the studies themselves or anything like that, it was because I was in a class of like over 600 kids. It was a very big school for the time. It was very impersonal, very cliquish. I had my friends, you know, I had my group of friends in that that I spent a lot of time with, but uh -uh, I didn't enjoy high school at all. No, pass on that. I even at one point wanted to quit school, but yet with the idea that I would go on to college. But anyway, I did graduate high school. Number six, what are your hobbies? And I do have a lot of different hobbies because I like to keep busy with different things. I mean, I've done quilting, you know, sewing, 
and um, knitting and crocheting and I play my piano keyboard and uh, I like my I'm getting interested in doing more gardening um, I, I, I do like traveling too just not able to travel too much right now unfortunately I like a variety of things because I just like to keep busy and learning new things and I think that's maybe that's what keeps me young yeah I gotta get busy learning new things number seven what do you do to relieve stress when stressed I try not to have a lot of stress in my life but I think when I do get stressed I become very 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 quiet very introverted yeah yeah I don't I don't really have a lot of stress in my life though and I think I think that takes talent to do that too <laughs> to not have stress in your life so anyway I don't have a lot to worry about I don't have a lot to be concerned about I don't have deadlines no I don't really have a lot of stress and I like it that way number eight who is the longest friend you have I had a friend that I had had for many years, starting with junior high school. And I knew her from that time until 2005 is when she passed away, okay? We were very good friends and I was like a part of their family. I spent holidays with them after my family moved out of the area. And we, we just, we were like a family, more than just friends. Now, Outside of that, since moving to Florida, too, I have a friend nearby here that actually got me started in YouTube. We met when we were hired into work at the hospital. We were in the same training class with a bunch of other people, too, who were hired for the same job. After class, we all went to our prospective work areas, which I was the only one that went to the emergency room, okay? And this friend of mine went to work at the women's center we never crossed paths again for a couple of years actually but we we remembered each other and you know would say hi in passing or chit chat here and there that type of thing until i retired when i got married and then i got more uh, in touch with her through um, emails and a year after about a year after i did retire she decided to retire too from the hospital and we've just been in touch constantly ever since. So yeah, she's a really good friend now. So I would say that I knew, knew her then since 2007 when we started at the hospital. Another of my friends I've had for well over 30 years and we met through the Shetland Sheepdog Club back in Minnesota. Um, we were both members of the club. Um, we went to shows together, we went to club events together. Uh, we were we were just good friends outside of that too and she's been down here to visit my husband and I since but I, I would say yeah it's been probably 30 years that I've known her off and on haven't seen her now for maybe two years but you know what it doesn't matter with a good friend you may not see each other for a couple of years or even talk to one another in a couple of years but once you get back together and you start talking and visiting and, and <laughs> Just doing things together it's like those there were no two years in between you know it's like you're starting right where you left off so anyway those are my really really good friends um, number nine what is your favorite movie I don't really have a favorite favorite movie I have several movies that I really like and I, I watch different movies um, you know, I don't really, you know, sci-fi is okay, but you know, I, I do like a, a, a bunch of different type of movies, not a certain genre. Um, it's like, yes, I like the classic movies, uh, Little Women, you know, that type of thing. Um, one movie that I just, I've been watching over and over and over again, because that's what I do. I'll, I have a movie that I like and I'm going to watch it several times until I kind of figure, okay, I've seen it enough, I'll just hold off on that, put it away and not watch it again for a while but then I'll pull it out again and I'll watch it again a couple more times right now I'm watching Baby Boom with Diane Keaton I like that movie a lot that was filmed back at a time when I was um, probably like I hate to say this too in my 40s in that time frame of my life and I could really relate to the story in that Baby Boom movie 
Um, but as far as a, a, a favorite movie, like one favorite movie, no, I don't have just one. Number 10, what is your favorite book? Same thing, I don't have just one favorite book. Um, matter of fact, re lately I, I don't read a lot. It puts me right to sleep. I, I don't know why, but I'll start reading something and yeah, I can just start dozing off. But um, I enjoy just about any type of book. Um, yeah, I, I even will read autobiographies or biographies, uh, histories, and I do like the Victorian period of, of time, actually, more than anything else. So books having to do with that period of time pique my interest. But a favorite book? I don't have one. Number 11, favorite thing to do on a stormy day? Stay inside. Number 12, favorite thing to do when the weather is perfect? Go outside. And I don't have to be out doing anything real sportsy or physical, but just to get out and enjoy the day. That's what I do. Number 13, do you prefer the big city or a small town? And that's kind of hard. I've never really lived in a small town before. I've lived in big cities, like I was born and raised in Topeka, Kansas, which is kind of, you know, it's a capital city, but it's kind of a, a big um, city. And then I lived or spent most of my adulthood in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And that's another big city. So I really have not experienced actually living in a small town, but I think for the most part, I could be happy anywhere as long as I have places that I can go to to shop to get what I need, go to the movies, you know, things like that. Um, I can be happy. I, I would be happy with that. Yeah. Number 14, the last one. What is the first thing you want to do when this virus is over or under control? Well, the first thing, hmm, I don't know if it would be the first thing, but one of the things that I would like to do when this is all over is like go somewhere. We had to cancel, like many other people, we, we did cancel our summer vacation plans because you just don't know what's going to take place. And before it got any further and we were to lose money on the reservation, we just decided to outright cancel, okay? I, I, miss, I love to travel. I, I would love to go somewhere, um, and I've told my husband that too. So even though we canceled our reservation in midsummer, if everything is safe enough for us to travel at that time, we can still get away. We just won't have reservations somewhere, and I would still like to do that. So, but as far as hmm, the first thing to do when the virus is over, well, I would be thankful for one thing, but that's not the first thing that I would do anyway, you know. Um, I think I would just leave it at that, travel somewhere, okay? Now, as far as this tag goes for anybody else, I'm, I'm not gonna tag people, but if you are interested in doing it, let me know that you do it, okay? But it's a get to know me tag. And maybe, maybe during this whole situation, this pandemic, doing this sort of thing, we just get to know each other much better than, than what we have now, okay? And that's the whole purpose of this, is just to get to know one another. And keep us occupied <laughs> during this time. Now, along with that, let me just tell you and explain that during this time, since I'm not able to go out and, and shop the deals in the stores because there are no deals in the stores because the stores aren't open, I've been shopping online a little bit. I confess, I have been going to Amazon and there are certain things that I found there that I've been interested in getting for quite some time. Um, one of the items that I ordered, it actually it wasn't the first item that I ordered either, but it's the first one that came. So let me show you what I got. Just a minute. Let me turn the camera around. First of all, what we have here is what's called a multi-cooker. Now, this was bought off a home shopping network channel called Evine back in the day, a few, what, a couple years ago? That's what the name of the channel was called. 
but it has changed names. Now it's called Shop HQ. This is uh, a unit that it bakes, it sautés, it, um, what else, a slow cooker and steams. And I mean, it, it has a variety of uses. I basically used it for roasting and that's what I use it for, but you can use it for a lot of other things. And the next little thing that I really love to use is what I call my Wonder Pot. And as you can see, that's another Cook's Companion product, but I loved my Wonder Pot. I used it for quite a few things. I steamed vegetables, which went in here, and then you put the water in the pot underneath there. I baked cakes in it. I made soups in this thing. This was a really nice little unit, and I really liked it a lot. Used it a lot, too. It, um, well, I guess it's like a, a glorified rice cooker in a way. It does rice. It soups. Um, you can stir fry in it, bake in it. I've baked a cake in it before. I've baked several cakes in it, and they turn out so nice and moist. Uh, steamed veggies all the time. That's basically what I've used on this uh, unit here. So it, this is a, a two-quart unit. It's a two-quart unit, I believe. Um, it's a small job, but boy, I tell you, it did the trick. Now, when you used it to bake a cake, though, it would take quite a while to do um, as compared to baking in an oven. I, it would take up to 90 minutes for me to bake a cake in this unit, but the cakes turned out wonderful, okay? And that would be a, a regular cake, like a, a mixed cake. I did German chocolate cakes quite often out of this. They turned out absolutely delicious. Now, this next thing is something that my husband got off the Home Shopping Network channel. One of them, don't know what, don't know which one rather, but it was before my time with him. It's called a Living Well pressure cooker. And this was the manual that came with it. I, I believe it was a Montel Williams um, pressure cooker that he sold on the um, Home Shopping Network channel. And my husband decided, hmm, he liked a few things that he saw made out of it, and he decided to give it a try. It's not a bad pressure cooker. I've used it before. Um, I've made chili in it, and I usually cook up my potatoes in it that I'm going to make into potato salad. I've done a couple other things in it, but not a lot. Now, growing up, yes, my mother had the um, the old-fashioned pressure cookers that you put on the stove. You know, it wasn't electric. I don't remember an electric one, and they were dangerous. I rem well, you know, if if you use them properly, I suppose they weren't dangerous. But there were all sorts of accidents that I remember hearing about. And when my mother was cooking, I remember hearing her say you know, stay away from this now, just stay away. It's not safe to go around. And so I was terrified of a pressure cooker every time she used it. And as an adult even, I've never used a pressure cooker until this one. Now this one is not bad, okay? But I wasn't really too sure of how I was using it. It's not a bad size for one or two people, but when you consider this is a two quart, okay, my little um, wonder pot, that's what the name of it is. That's a two quart size. This was a three quart size. But recently, I went shopping on Amazon. And I know that I hinted in the past that, well, you know what? My Wonder Pot was beginning to show signs of wear and tear. It still worked okay. But I didn't really want a chance not having something like it and have that go out on me without a backup. So... I started shopping and I ended up, yeah, mm -hmm. a new Instant Pot. This is an Instant Pot Duo Plus and it is sleek. <laughs> it looks a little bit difficult to work. It's got a lot of buttons on it, but I've watched demonstrations and gotten a few recipes. And I'm, I'm going to try something real soon here. Basically, we, liked a lot, we do like a lot of um, steamed vegetables, so I'm going to try some steamed veggies and make them in our new Instant Pot. And I've gleaned other recipes off YouTube, of course, and I'm, I'm anxious to try them as well. 
but I'm not too worried about this as a pressure cooker compared to this. Even though the principle is the same, they all have the steam coming out the top, you know, no problem. I, I guess I just think this one sounds a little bit safer and I've seen enough demonstrations with it that I kind of know how to work it. So yes, I'm, I'm wanting to give it a try and, and continue with it. And I've heard nothing but good about them. So yeah, what have I got to lose? So this is what I've got going and I'm going to be cooking dinner in it real soon. But if you guys know, I don't have any sales codes or anything like that and I'm not sponsored in any way by this company, but I think from what I've seen on YouTube and what I've seen uh, from other people that have these Instant Pots, you can do so much with them. It's amazing. It really is. And this one kitchen tool takes the place of that and that and even that in my kitchen. So I have freed up some space for, oh, okay, some new kitchen tools coming in <laughs> real soon. I've got other things uh, that I've bought recently and they'll be coming as soon as, uh, well, in about another week I should have another item and then a week after that, the last thing that I ordered. And I'm gonna be starting to do a lot of kitchen work, so stay tuned, I'll be filming it as I learn to work these utensils. So learn along with me. If you're new to it, come on, join the bandwagon and learn along with me and do things, okay? Uh, so anyway, that's about it for this time. I hope you're all doing well. Stay well. Take care, and we'll be talking again real soon, but it's going to be bye for this time.